What's going on guys, ZTA Prime back here again. Today I'm gonna be adding an external GPU to the all new Latte Panda Alpha. So if you're not familiar with the Latte Panda Alpha, I've already done kind of an initial video. I did some testing and overview of the hardware here. I'm gonna leave a link to that in the description. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and leave a playlist because I have more videos coming on this board and I'm gonna add them all to that playlist. But here's a quick overview of the basic specs. The CPU is a dual core four thread Intel seventh generation core M7Y30 at one gigahertz, but it does turbo up to 2.6. This is the same CPU that's in some of the MacBooks. The GPU is the built-in Intel HD615. It will go up to 900 megahertz. And as for RAM, eight gigabytes DDR3 soldered to the board and it's 1867 megahertz. There's a lot more going on here, so go ahead and check that video out. I'm also going to leave a link to DF Robot. You can find out more and even buy one of these there. So in this video, I'm going to be adding an NVIDIA GT 1030 2GB GDDR5 GPU to this unit. I have a few more higher-end video cards that I want to test with this thing, but this initial video is going to be on the 1030. So as you can see here, this does support two M2 slots. We have an M2 M key. It does support PCIe 4X and an M2 E key, which only supports 2X. So obviously I'm going to go with the more high performance version, the M2 M key that supports PCIe 4X. And to do that, I'm just going to add one of these small little adapters. This is an M.2 M key to PCIe 4X. I picked up two of these for eight bucks on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description. The M2 connection on the Latte Panda is just not going to put out enough wattage to power any GPU. We will have to add external power, and I'm actually working on an easy solution for this. I want an all-in-one power supply that I can power the GPU and the Latte Panda by itself. Hopefully all my parts will show up in a few days and I can go ahead and build it and test it out. For now, I'm going to be using an external power supply. Here's the GT1030. I am using the GDDR5 version. It's much better than the DDR4. This is a low-profile Zotac. I just went ahead and added a few brass standoffs to the Latte Panda. It's flipped upside down. I've placed the GPU in the new connection. I had to remove the GPU plate because it was hitting the board, but I think it looks pretty cool like this. There is no locking mechanism on the PCI connector, so I do have to be careful with it. I am planning on fabricating a little tiny bracket from one of the brass standoffs to hold it all in place. But for now, it should work on the bench perfectly. Now I need to add power to the GPU. I just have an EVGA 550 watt modular power supply I had laying around. So I have Molex that came with the adapter to the PCI X4 connection. We're getting power to the GPU. It boots up fine. I just need to install the drivers and we'll get testing this thing out. All right, so here we are. I just installed the NVIDIA drivers. It works fine. Now we will be losing performance because this is not PCI X16, but I don't think it's gonna be too bad with the GT1030. So here we have it. Core M37Y30, got 8 gigabytes of 1867 megahertz RAM, and the GT1032 gigabyte. Now I did disable the internal GPU so I could get all my RAM back for the system itself. The CPU is staying a lot cooler now because the GPU was really heating everything up. I have increased performance of the CPU itself. I went to 15 watts and I turned the turbo timer up to 96 seconds instead of 28. I do see a significant gain in benchmarks just doing this without an external GPU, so I figured I'd do it here too. The first thing I wanted to test was the Heaven benchmark. DX11, 1080p, high settings. The stock Latte Panda with the built-in Intel HD615 scored a 226. We got 9 FPS, minimum 5.9, maximum 19.1. My CPU wattage was set exactly the same in both of these benchmarks. I did not mess around with the GT1030 clocks. I could overclock it a little bit and score a little higher, but for the FPS, 27.6, score 696, minimum 13.1, and maximum 64.2. We got a significant increase over the stock Intel HD615. I did run this benchmark at high, and the GT1030 isn't a high settings kind of graphics card. It's more of a medium, low settings graphics card. You can pick a new one up on Amazon for about 80 bucks. It's one of my favorite low-end GPUs right now. It's just a really good deal for what you're getting. The next benchmark I ran was 3 d Mark Night Raid. Now, I thought about going with Firestrike, but neither of these GPUs are going to perform well in that benchmark at all. So here's the Latte Panda Alpha score. Now I did set the CPU to 15 watt and I set that turbo timer up to 96 seconds. Overall score of 3,795. 
The graphics score was 4,225 and the CPU score was 2,407. With the GT1030 installed, the overall score was 8,453. The graphics score was a 14,932 and CPU 2,444. So obviously our graphics performance is significantly increased with the GT1030. It's not going to help out in the CPU department, but when we need a GPU for gaming, this is definitely going to help out. So I wanted to test out a few different games. Here's Injustice 2. I ran the benchmark 1080p high settings. This is stock HD 615. We scored average FPS of 11. With the GT 1030, same exact settings, average FPS 43. Now this is at high settings. If we went to medium and low, we could probably get 60 FPS out of it. But Injustice 2 is a very CPU intensive game, and I noticed in gameplay, we were completely maxed out on the CPU. I wanted to test all of these games in 1080p. This is Doom, medium settings, 1080p, using the Vulkan API, and the rendering resolution was set to 100%. Now this game does perform pretty well at 720p low settings. In my first video I did on Latte Panda Alpha, I tested this game, and I was impressed by it. But here's the Alpha with the GT1030. 1080p, medium settings. I did switch over to OpenGL because it seems to perform better with this GT1030 on OpenGL. Now I tested the same thing with Vulkan on the stock setup. It performs much better with Vulkan instead of OpenGL. I'm not sure what's going on here, but we do have all medium settings. Resolution scale is set to 100%. I got all the information on screen here. We have GPU usage, memory usage, CPU usage, RAM, FPS. We also have the current FPS, minimum, average, and max. If we drop the resolution scale down to about 75%, I'm pretty sure we could get 60 FPS on medium settings, or you could just drop it down below. If we take a look at the CPU usage, we're at about 92%, it does drop down to 70, so we're not bottlenecking the GPU with the CPU. And I didn't think it would bottleneck a GT1030, but it might bottleneck a GTX 1066 gigabyte. And I do plan on making another eGPU video with the Latte Panda. I have a GTX 1050 Ti and a GTX 1060 6GB that I want to test out. I kind of want to do a little versus battle. But the performance here is really great. And if you just tinker around with the settings, you could get a constant 60 FPS out of a GT 1030 and a Latte Panda Alpha. This is Overwatch with the GT1030. Now, in a previous video, I tested it out on the stock setup. I had to go to 720p, turn the rendering resolution down, and go to low. Here, we're at 1080p, medium settings, rendering resolution is set at 100%. And performance is great here. We have a minimum of 53, an average of 69, and a maximum of 79. Now this is medium settings, there's a lot of stuff you can tinker with. You could turn the rendering resolution down and get even better performance out of it. But I think it's really awesome to see it running at 1080p medium settings this well. It's definitely fully playable on this setup here. And finally, GTA 5. Now the stock Latte Panda Alpha struggles with this game on low settings 720p. We get an average of around 26 FPS that way. Rendering resolution is at 100%, DirectX 11, 1080p. I do have everything set to normal. Got a little bit of distance scaling and population variety set up a little bit. And I'm going to reset this minimum and average here because in the menus it does go up to like 200. And one thing that really kills this game in performance is the CPU. We can only turbo up to 2.6 and most of the time the Latte Panda does stay at 2.4. Even with the wattage and the turbo boost timer set up. So we're at 2.4 gigahertz, nine watts on the CPU. And the CPU is almost pegged completely out. There we go. So we do have a little more we can go with this GT1030. The CPU is not allowing us to in this game. It's a very CPU intensive game. So far we have a minimum of 44 FPS, an average of 50 and a maximum of 74. And that 74 is not right because when I hit my benchmark button, it does go into a menu. 
See, we just went up. So at 1080p normal settings, you can expect around 50 FPS with a GT 1030 and a Latte Panda Alpha. I think that's pretty impressive for a little single board computer. Now I know we've added an external GPU to it, making it pretty much a full-fledged computer, but I love doing stuff like this, and the reason I did this video was because it can be done. So overall, the Alpha works really well with an eGPU connected. Sure, we only get PCI X4, but it's doing a great job here. So should you buy something like this over a gaming laptop or a gaming PC? Definitely not. You could put together a really nice gaming PC for pretty cheap using used parts if you search eBay and Craigslist. Like I mentioned, I did this because it can be done and I love messing around with single board computers. Really appreciate you guys watching. I do have a couple more videos on eGPUs with the Latte Panda Alpha. If you want to see something ridiculous like a GTX 1060 6GB connected to this little board, stay tuned to the channel. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, turn notifications on because I got a lot more coming. I need to move on to some retro emulation videos using the stock Latte Panda Alpha. So this might come out in a few days. I'm not exactly sure. I do have a lot of it recorded already. Just need to edit it up. If you could, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and like always, thanks for watching.